What's going on, growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It's a beautiful summer day here, a little bit hot, but me and Tuck want to take you along with us for a tour of the backyard gardens that are rooted, built, and designed with permaculture principles. Let's go! Let's start things out in the old food forest. We'll move over to this pallet raised bed right here, just filled with tomatoes. There are so many tomatoes on here. Almost ripe, there are some ripe ones on the other side. But this whole pallet bed, I really love how it came out, the whole design of it. The trellis part where we're tying everything up looks nice, I think it came out well, and it's doing a great job of supporting the tomatoes. This is a location where most people probably wouldn't think to put a bed like this, considering right to the left of where you are, there's a cherry tree, and right here there's an apple tree. But this cherry tree that's on the left of me is actually on the north side of the bed. So we designed it like this. And you'll notice I use that word twice already, design. That is the most important word when it comes to permaculture. Permaculture is a, essentially a design science, where we're using design not just for aesthetics. Let me try one of these tomatoes though, before I get, you know, too into what I'm saying. Let's try some of these Gardner Sweet Treat tomatoes. This is the first time I've grown it. It's got a decent shape to it. Let's bite into one. I've had them before and I'll kind of tell you uh, what I think about it. Mm. Juicy tomato, meaty tomato, very mild flavor. Not sweet enough in my opinion. I probably won't be growing this again even though it ha is prolific producer. The flavor just isn't there. If I want a really prolific producer, I'll go with something like the Sweet 100, the Super Sweet 100. Let's keep moving though, because we have uh, a lot of stuff to see. To the left of us here, we've got the horseradish. This will harvest in like October, November, so this still has a lot of time, this horseradish, but it's another way we extend our season. Going back to that word design, in permaculture, we don't design things just for aesthetics. We don't design things so they look good. We design things for function. So Bill Mollison talks about functional design. That's so important, and that's something we try to apply into the gardens, something we try to think about. Here's the super sweet 100 that I was talking about. This is the difference uh, you know, from that other tomato. This thing's just as prolific, or probably even more prolific, yet the flavor is way better in my opinion. Or you can go with the sun gold cherry right here. Notice even behind this cherry, we've got the apples growing producing and doing really well. The apples have really taken off this year, so we love seeing that. And as we move back behind us, we've got another apple tree. This is the Honeycrisp apple. This thing has so many apples on it, I wonder if I left too many, but I think we'll be okay. Then we'll start moving to these uh, raised beds right here. Not too long ago, I had an apple tree planted in this section right here, a red delicious apple. It was the wrong variety though, and it wasn't producing well, so I took that out. It hurt at the time to take it out, but now I've gotten so much food in this location, it's truly made it worth it. Let me bring you in and show you some of these peppers and stuff in here. Look how big some of these peppers are getting. They look excellent. So we're gonna have a nice pepper harvest coming up. And then as we look to our right over here, we've got even more peppers. And here's the Jimmy Nardello. They're starting to get, get some color to them, which is what we love to see. And then we've got some, the Creole de Cocinas are getting big in here. Look how tall this pepper is on the backside. Beautiful. And then look on this, on this side too, <laughs> all the cucumbers. Some of them I missed because there's just too many. Tuck's looking for a cucumber. There's some in here. <laughs> look at these cucumbers growing on the peppers. Just beautiful. Tuck, want a cucumber boy? I'll just grab this. You want this boy? Crack it open for him so he doesn't have to do it himself. He loves snacking on these things though. So we'll leave that for him, let him have some fun. You'll notice right next to it, look at this, chamomile came up on its own. That's one of the things I love about a garden like this and permaculture and a food forest is we built this garden to design it so a lot of the things in here are self-replicating if we want them to be. I mean, everything in nature is kind of self-replicating on its own because it just drops its seed, the next generation comes up. But that's really uh, something we take advantage of in here. And we can take advantage of it when we, when we can identify uh, seedlings at young stages. That's a good way to do it. So we would have pulled that out had we not known that that was a chamomile. But let's keep going. We got so much stuff to see. And we'll keep talking a little bit more about permaculture and how we apply it into the garden. And um, a good way to talk about permaculture is it's kind of nothing more than the arrangement of things that have always been in, in patterns that for, are harmonic and are cooperative. So that's a big word we like in permaculture, cooperation as opposed to um, you know, competition. You'll notice right here in a section, this, the grapes are really not doing well. They're doing poorly. I'll show you sections that the grapes are doing a lot better. This is, a, is an example of 
I, I, I would say bad design. As we look up top, you'll notice, look how much shade is in here. It's just, everything's gone, uh, just grown so much, it's shaded itself out and it's starting to suffocate itself as a natural forest would. This is what we don't want. This is where we need to step in and make sure that we're removing some things and balancing the system back out so we get back to harmony and cooperation as opposed to competition. There's just way too much competition in here. But I know there's some peaches left up top, so let's grab some stuff and actually make this a tour. Look at the size of the oregano I'll show you below me too. But I know there's some peaches up here. I think I got a monster one. Look at them. Nothing like fresh peaches in the garden. So beautiful, so delicious. We'll grab this one, taste it, see what it's like. Oh. Look at the color on it too. We've got a little bit of like a fungal damage right here, but that's okay. A little bit of brown rot. That's not gonna hurt us. This is organic, this is natural. This is so good. Uh, <laughs> Bill Mollison has got some quotes that I love so much. I consider him to be such a, he, I think he's just such a genius when it comes to gardening and nature and stuff. And he says, when it comes to permaculture, um, you know, You'll know when you do some. You'll know you're doing it right when you don't really have to do anything. So that's the idea. When everything's working together in cooperation, you don't have to do much. That's what we love. Let's try this peach out. Incredibly sweet. Incredibly juicy. So good. Let's keep moving though. We've got some grapes and stuff I want to show you. Here's a version where the grapes are getting a lot more light and you can see the difference when the grapes get more light. So here's the Niagara grapes and look at the sun coming through. You can see how it's hitting all the grapes. This is a lot more what we want. And we've pruned a lot of the uh, fan leaves up top to open that light up. I've talked about it many times, but these right here are the North American grapes. So they're Niagara grapes, um, Catawba grapes, uh, Concord grapes. These are ones that are native to where I live in North America. These ones are a lot more disease resistant than your European ones. Some of your European grapes are harder to get because they're not acclimated to this climate that I have where we've got high humidity and stuff like that. So that's what work, works best in our particular situation. And that's what we try to take advantage of. Let me bring you over to these pears right here. This is one that I talked about in my previous uh, fruit tree video where I hadn't thinned it enough in the past. I think I've got it thinned beautifully now. You'll see the distribution of the pears, the Chajura ones, how they all have their own space. There's gaps between them and not one branch is holding too many. We're getting good even ripening on these pears and these are the Chajura pears, sometimes called the butterscotch pears because they are so sweet. They literally taste like butterscotch. <laughs> so delicious. In the four-year-old food forest now, I want to show you a section back here. This is one of my better examples of functional design, I believe. Just a couple months ago, this section right here was just all sand and I decided to put in this keyhole raised bed. So I'll give you a clip of what it looked like just a couple months ago before we put the bed in. And the reason I decided a keyhole raised bed was because I thought that I would be able to uh, plant the bed like that and then when I want to reach into a section, I could just step into this keyhole which is in this middle this little section, but I can't even get there because the zucchini has literally taken over the bed. And that doesn't upset me at all. That's just one of those things that happens when it comes to nature. Like uh, you could try to plan for it, but sometimes it will just blow your mind and just grow so vigorously you can't keep up with it. Look at these beans back here. I mean, I'll come show you in a bit. The amount of beans on here is just insane. There are, it's just loaded. I'm never gonna be able to find or pick all of them. Look at that. And they didn't have a place to trellis up anymore, so look at this. <laughs> they started trellising themselves. Incredible. I love to see it. So beautiful. And Bill Mollison, he's, he's a, you know, such a genius, like I mentioned. He's got some really funny things and sayings that he, that he talks about. And I remember a story when he went to an agricultural college because they wanted to speak with him. And he went to the agricultural college. The first thing he asked was if they had a definition of the word sustainable. He said not one of them could define the word sustainable, yet they were all trying to get government grants for it. So he's kind of like a, you know, a non-conformist and against a lot of the things that the, that the schools want to say, which I think is nice. I think it's good to have a balance between uh, you know, some of what the books say and then some of what nature says. A good, uh, you know, having experience with both of them. I think Bill was a master of that. Let me show you some of these tomatoes here. Look at the Rosetta Burns, absolutely loaded, looking beautiful. Here's the, what's this one? Honey Drop Cherry, 
Costaludo Genovese, Sun Gold Sherry. The Lemon Boys are loaded over here. I wanted to show you one. After I show you the Lemon Boy, I want to show you on this other side too. Here's the Chef's Choice Orange. This is the one I was talking about. That is the, that's the, um, the, the offspring of the, yellow, the Goldie Yellow. And this Chef's Choice Orange is one of the best late tomatoes there are. So this is one you definitely want to get in, even though it's a hybrid. It's a great one to put in to make sure you extend that harvest. Tuck's in and come over and verify it. Looks like we've got a tuck approved on that one. Saldaki right here, I love. And then some of the pink tongues next to me. Look at this thing. I didn't realize how big this thing got. I'm gonna have to harvest it. This is a little too big, but it's still okay. We'll keep moving back behind us where we've got a nice amount of tomatoes, a beautiful section here. I've got some new young tomatoes coming up that I actually just stuck in. And then we've got, look at that, just a beautiful array of tomatoes behind us. And then we've got some tall eggplants here and some tall peppers too that are doing well. Really beautiful looking peppers, nice size on them. And these eggplants are gonna be big producers. So as, the, as we get later into the summer and closer to fall, we'll be getting a lot of these uh, peppers, eggplants, and the grapes to the left of us will get even more ripe. I can see some of the bees are working on them over there, underneath trying to eat some of these delicious, delicious grapes. So good. So Bill Mollison does actually define sustainable for us. Look at Tuck chewing on one of these eggplants. We don't want you eating that boy. Look at him. He's just eating the eggplant while still on it. I guess he does like these. I didn't think he did, but I guess he likes snacking on them. I don't think he's eating that much of it. I think he's kind of just ripping it up. He's having fun out here though, you'll see. Hit that like button if you love seeing this guy in the videos. And Bill Mollison does define sustainable for us. He says a system is sustainable, one that produces more in its lifetime than it takes to create and maintain it. So that's really what he says sustainable is. And I have to agree with him on that. I mean, how could I, how could I not? Behind us, we've got some beautiful apples here. Nice looking tree, very healthy looking and looks like we'll get a nice harvest on those. And then the Williams Pride apple, this has finished, but I do want to cut into an apple and show you what the Williams Pride looks like on the inside because I, I wanted to do that for the apple video. I just, you know, I got so excited during the video, I actually forgot to do it. Under here, we've got more of the dragon tongue beans. So we've got this plant that's just getting started in regards to dragon tongue beans, putting out a bunch. So we'll be eating these. We've got another plant that Tuck's protecting right now. You'll see him over there. This guy's been working hard. It's starting to get hot out. So uh, we're getting a little warm. Tuck's digging his holes. He's got a little, a little dragon tongue next to him. Let's see if he wants it. So he can just lay, lay in his little holes and snack on his, on his, on his beans. He always spits out the, the, the end to kind of clean it off. And then he'll just snack on these. Pretty good, huh? Hey, this guy likes the dragon tongues. So do I. We got a bunch of cucumbers and stuff next to us too over here. Let's grab some of these. It looks like I missed a couple. I mean, just in this one section. One, two, three. And cucumbers are 95% water. <laughs> so they need a lot of water, especially when it gets hot out. If you want these things to pump out a lot of cucumbers, you gotta make sure you're staying on top of the watering and you have a nice mulch down. If you stay on top of picking your cucumbers regularly, if you water them and you have a good mulch down, you could get good production for like six weeks. So that's pretty important. You always wanna stagger your plantings though. You'll notice, I'll bring you to a section back where I have cucumbers that are just really getting into uh, production. So we have ones that are finishing and ones that are just starting. This way we are always getting a good harvest. Here's the monster zucchini back here. This thing is epic. Look at the size of it. Producing so many zucchinis. It's amazing. Carrots back here too, still in here. A lot of carrots. I probably should have grabbed more of them earlier, but they're still doing great. So we'll be snacking on those. I'm sure Tuck will show up soon. Blueberries looking good. And the pears are really starting to come into their own. They're getting closer to their season. So they're getting nice size on them. Look at these pears. This is gonna be excellent producer. So right here is are the strawberries. This was the first fruit really we were eating. And then we went, uh, you know, raspberries, blueberries. Uh, then we have peaches, apples, grapes, pears. We even have blackberries that I didn't grab yet, but well, we can grab some. Sunflowers here look beautiful. As I keep moving, I also wanted to mention another reason that I love permaculture so much. So permaculture, one reason I love it is, uh, is it's, it's a decentralized form of gardening. There's, it's not trademarked 
and it's there's no central hub there's no one leader if you have an issue with permaculture you can't call somebody you can't call a central station and complain about it it's a decentralized open source form of information it's and it's always open to add things to it that's why i love it look at this look at all these beans beautiful So don't let anyone tell you you're not doing permaculture because they don't have the right to. Bill Mollison kind of made sure of that. Look at these cucumbers in here. This is what I was mentioning. These cucumbers are just coming into their own and doing real well. As we take a step back, we'll grab from these. Look at this birdie's raised bed. Let's think back a couple months, not even very long ago, when we were pulling out uh, you know, bu a, a bunch of different cabbages from this one spot. A few months later, we'll pull, we're pulling out a bunch of different food. And then we'll fast forward a little from here and we'll be pulling out even more brassicas. So just because you don't have a large location doesn't mean you can't get the most out of it. If you can apply permaculture principles to it, be smart with your design and look at things as a designer. Don't think of yourself just as a gardener. Think of yourself as a natural designer who, who looks at nature, finds patterns and applies them onto a landscape to produce the most possible food. Because that's really what we want to do. That's the whole main goal. Look at the tomatoes in the back. Looking beautiful. Those, uh, those grapes are almost ready because these are the Niagara's. So these are probably so sweet. Another slip screen grape, let's try. Mm. Incredibly sweet flavor, so delicious. Before I let you go, I just wanted to cut into one of these apples like I said I would. Here are some of the Williams Pride apples that I just harvested the other day. Check out that uh, apple tree video if you haven't seen it because I shared some of the tips for growing fruit trees that I've never shared before. Some of my kind of like secret tips. So I think there's a lot of value in it. I think Tuck is thirsty. We've got a cold water for him because it's been very hot. I'm trying to give him some nice cold water. Allow him to drink a little bit of that. And I wanted to cut into this baby, shine it up for you to show you just how beautiful these Williams Pride are. I also wanted to mention permaculture too. I love it because I think permaculture is probably one of the more advanced forms of gardening. As simple as you could do it in my opinion would be uh, monoculture, just eliminating everything. In permaculture we try to have everything work together. Look how beautiful that is. Nice color. Can't beat that. So this is how I like eating them. Just like this skin and all. Mm. Incredible flavor. Incredibly ripe. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope a video like this uh, kind of opens up your mind a little bit. Me and Tuck love making these because we don't think that you guys are like a puzzle and you're missing 20 pieces and you just have no clue what's going on. We see a lot of you as um, having a puzzle with just a few pieces missing. And we wanna try to be the ones to give you ideas to be, hopefully fill those little pieces in to have the whole thing to come together. Because when it all comes together, it's, it's rewarding, it's enjoyable, and there's just nothing like it. So we want you guys to be a part of that as well. Tuck spin out here, I can, man, you guys got to throw some hearts in the comments for this guy because it is hot. He doesn't quit. Look at him. Digging his holes, drinking his water. We probably wouldn't be out here as much if it wasn't for this guy. He's the best. And we wanted to thank Lori Ellis, one of the new members of the channel. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. It means a lot to me and Tuck to know that you're willing to contribute. So thank you. We wanted to also thank everyone who are giving the super thankses. It means a lot to us also. And before we let you go, we wanted to let you know to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. The boss, the king, Tuck, and James, we'll be back to you again real soon. We out.